did, did you always, like if I was in high school with you, uh, 13, 14, 15 years old, did you always have an absolute killer instinct where I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove the way to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill this guy when we face him. Was it always like that when you were in high school or that kind of developed later on? Yeah, I think it developed over a period of time. And I think there was a work ethic that was in me. Um, I think most people probably know a few things about me, but I was never, I would say, like a prodigy. You know, I wasn't like the kid where you see Tiger Woods swinging on the Johnny Carson show at two or three years old. And, you know, his swing looks as good as it did at three years old as it did, you know, as he, as he grew older. Or, you know, certain players that, ha that had this unbelievable uh, prodigy aspect to themselves. I, I, I saw myself as someone who probably had some other traits that maybe were hard to identify, but that were really sustainable over time, which was, I would say, work ethic and, and discipline. And that was instilled in me by, I think, my parents. I mean, there was part of it that they gave me, but also just behaviorally growing up in an environment where my dad was out to, wor out to work every morning, you know, trying to go make a living for our family. And my mom woke up every day trying to figure out how to make sure the home was comfortable for us and, you know, to support the kids. So there was this discipline that I had that even as 13, 14, 15 years old, where all these other boys were, I went to an all boy school in the Bay Area. And I remember showing up my first day as freshman year. I didn't have much, you know, hair under my arms or anything like that. I was like, and these other kids came in shaving and I'm like, what the hell is this? I didn't know how to put the pads on in my pants when I tried out for freshman football. I mean, I had never played until that point, except in the street. So these kids came out there, they had, you know, helmets and shoulder pads that they had worn for four years through Pop Warner. And I went on the field and I was like, I'm gonna get killed out here, you know? And my freshman year, I didn't even play. I was the backup quarterback on a team that went 0 and 8. That says a lot. <laughs> I couldn't get on the field and we never won a game anyway. I mean, it's one thing to be the starting quarterback and to lose. If they don't even think you're good enough to be a starting quarterback on a team that's 0-8, you must really suck. And the reason why I played my second year was because that quarterback quit because he's like, I'm not playing football anymore. We suck. I'm going to focus on basketball. So naturally, I was like, oh, cool. I'll continue to, you know, work on my skill because I actually had a halfway decent arm. But a lot of it was even going into my second year in high school, there were workouts in the morning at 6 a.m. before school. And I was like, okay, I can, I can get up at 6 a.m. and I can go do these rope drills where you'd run through the ropes. See, a lot of people do that. There were these hills that we would run up. And there was probably less than 10 people there, but I was probably one of the three that were there almost every single day to try to continue to push myself to grow in these maybe physical areas that I was really behind a lot of other people at. Because naturally, no one's good at everything. I mean, that's just not the way life works. We're all talented at certain things, but we can really continue to improve our weaknesses if we're humble enough to identify them and we can build on our strengths. And I think we're all trying to find a more well-rounded aspect to ourselves. but a lot of that has to come with this, uh, this understanding about yourself that what you know is very limited and what you don't know is limitless and you have an opportunity every day to surround yourself with people to help you grow.